Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Brett Madigan, welcome back to Mad Again. So in this video, I wanna discuss whether or not GeForce Now is a viable solution here in Australia. A couple of weeks ago, there was a open participation beta thing. Keeping in mind, this company has been pushing this beta since May of this year. And again with the official announcement in June. They also seem to have started an esports team before the service was even online. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, jump into my thoughts. Let's get into the software. But first, for those that don't know what GeForce Now is, essentially it's a streaming service that allows you to stream games in real time over the internet. I don't like the term cloud, so I'm not gonna use it. Which turns any laptop, desktop, phone, iPad, etc. into a gaming PC. Right now there's two tiers. Basic, which is a free account that will add you to a queue and connect to the next available server with one hour continuous play sessions and RTX features disabled. Priority access, however, lets you skip the queue, increased playtime sessions to four hours and allows RTX support. Currently, it's $19.99 a month and subject to change quite soon. Comparing the premium beta versus the basic release version, I didn't really notice too many absurd issues besides this one crash. I noticed the retail version no longer shows the display resolution, and with Premium GeForce Now, it adds a 1920 by 1200 resolution. Not too sure why, because I've got a 16 by 9 display. Hmm. But they did, however, completely remove the RTX options entirely from the basic version, which I thought was interesting. You learn pretty quick not to download things in the background whilst trying to play a game. This is why. <laughs> anyway, on with the video. Unless notified, all gameplay and footage of GeForce Now is using the publicly available basic account. Okay, so the first time you load up the software, you'll be greeted with a couple of categories down here. But what you might be sitting there thinking, hmm, I thought there was thousands of supported games by this platform. Yeah, I thought the same thing until I looked at the supported games. So let's take Assassin's Creed Rogue, for example. So they count it as being several individual games depending on the platform. So in this case, Rogue being on Epic Games and Ubisoft Connect, as well as Steam. I can't find it specifically here by looking at it, but I'm assuming it's also counted there as well. Yep, Steam. So it's counting Rogue on three different platforms as three individual games. <sighs> I hate that idea. Anyway, so if we go to the settings, you'll see that I've connected my Steam account and it says of my 796 games, only 158 of those are supported by this platform. Anyway, whatever. That's not what my concern is. What my concern is, is when it adds games to your library and you go Steam, for example, it's still trying to select more. It's still trying to add more games under this list, and I'll show you one of them that I don't own at all. Ah, there we go. World War Z. I do not own this game on either platform it's on. Oh, actually, no. I, I think I have it on Epic Game Store, but I'm not signed into my Epic Games account. Never have on this. So I'm not too sure why that's coming up under Steam. So yeah, that's a bit of a concern for me. But also... Another concern is setting it to setting the streaming quality to custom. The maximum bit rate supported by this platform is 50 megabits, which is about six megabytes. And the highest frame rate supported is 60. So I'm not too sure what you'd spend $20 on other than getting RTX support, longer play times, and not having to wait. Let's see how long I have to wait now. Let's go Metro Exodus. Yeah, I would completely understand if there was, you know, everyone in Australia using GeForce Now that the free accounts might not be viable. But currently, it's not that bad. As you can see, I'm not waiting for anything. It doesn't say your X amount in the queue at all. It's loading up. So let's get into some of the testing methodology. For the first section, I'll be looking at texture quality from native versus GeForce Now at the maximum bitrate possible followed by calculating the input delay that's added using GeForce Now. Before we get into that, I do want to go through a bit of weirdness that occurs with the GeForce Now version. I've noticed that while starting Metro Exodus, that it stutters during the intro cutscene. And as you can see, with the native version, it doesn't stutter. There's also some mild compression between the two, but nothing too drastic. 
But also, how is nothing changing here besides the frame rate? It sounds like I'm getting uber packet loss. Listen to that crackling. Let's see how long it takes to get to the menu after the intro is finished. Also, I'd like to point out, you can't skip the intro on GeForce Now. No idea why. <laughs> that wait time was horrible. <laughs> why does it take so long? Although the video stream does seem to be relatively okay during this cutscene, it's the audio stream that suffers. There's also this weird glitch you'll see. I must find that signal. Between endless years of hopeless existence and even a single moment of hope, I must choose hope. I must find that signal. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I did this test, I could have sworn GeForce Now just looked overly blurry. But as you can see, there isn't a lot of difference here. Am I going blind or is it the viewport in Premiere Pro? I don't know, but I could have sworn whilst playing Metro Exodus with GeForce Now, the quality just looked overly blurry. I don't know what's going on here. But what I do know for certain is that it feels choppy to play. By that I mean when I'm moving the mouse, it doesn't feel smooth. It's hard to show exactly what I'm talking about because if I record at 60 FPS with GeForce Now, it kind of looks smooth. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it or try the software out yourself. Now to test the input delay. Now I don't have any fancy equipment to test this. So what I did was recorded my screen and my mouse at the same time with a 60 FPS frame rate on the recording and calculated it from that. So here you can see that there's two frames of input delay. It's pretty simple to calculate this. Add the frames of input delay, divide that by 60 and you'll get an answer and times that by a thousand, which will give you your input delay in milliseconds. In this case, there's 33.33 milliseconds of delay on the native version of Metro Exodus. Now let's see how much delay there is when you move the mouse. From this, we can see that there's three frames, which is equal to 50 milliseconds of delay. Now let's work out how much input delay there is with GeForce Now. Here we can see three frames. Once again, it's equal to 50 milliseconds of input delay, which is the same amount as moving the mouse on the native version. Here we can see there's four frames, which is equal to 66.66 .66 milliseconds of delay. Now let's compare the click delay between the two. All I'm doing here is subtracting the native version to GeForce Now and that's how I get the total. So essentially GeForce Now is adding about 16.67 milliseconds of delay to each click. And the same goes for moving the mouse. Though I do have to preface this, I'm not sure if the millisecond response time listed on the statistics menu is an added 30 milliseconds response or what's going on there because I've noticed that any game that I play, it's still stating 30 milliseconds. So unless I'm downloading something crazy in the background, it doesn't change. Even though it feels like I'm getting immense packet loss, nothing changes. Even if the frame rate drops, Packet loss stays the same, as well as the milliseconds. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but in the overall experience, the only downfall that I see with this product or this service is the delay matters. I don't see anyone playing multiplayer using the service, and if they are, congratulations. But for me as a player, the delay, the input response is not there. But in the long run, I don't see this being something that I would go back to anytime soon. Unless the overall infrastructure, the delays are decreased, the input latency is decreased, and the overall resolution is closer to native, then I personally don't see myself going back to this. But that said, it is an amazing service when it comes to the technology behind it, right? Five years ago, we never had any of this sort of thing in Australia. So to be able to get this now, it blows my mind. To be able to just stream a game over the internet, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> but what I don't understand is the fact that this is $20 right now per month to use games you currently already own. Hmm, okay. So to put that in perspective, EA Play has most of the modern 
titles for that service for about $8. Microsoft's Game Pass, for example, depending on what time of year you actually go for that service, it can be anywhere from $1 to $15. But you get a massive library to back that up. Whereas NVIDIA GeForce Now, you pay 20 bucks to play games you already own. Personally, I don't see that as a viable business model here in Australia, right? Why would I go out of my way to spend money on a game that I know I cannot play on my own computer? I don't understand that. But there might be people out there that go, fuck man, I want to play this right now and I'm going to stream it. I don't care what it feels like. They're more power to you, dude. But for me, I don't see this as a service that I would want to go for unless it included the library of games that they support. I think that's how I'm going to finish this. I love the idea of the service, but the way they've implemented it, I don't agree with. Both with the layout of the software, not able to create your own categories, just usability things that just kind of annoy me or that I've been used to with Steam. I don't know, dude. The only time I see somebody using this would be if they don't have the horsepower to run a specific game, i.e. Cyberpunk 2077. Keeping in mind that game runs like complete trash, but my point stands. If you can't run the game natively, then sure, this service is viable to you. I just don't understand the mindset of the consumer that would willingly pay for a service like this. When there's services like PlayStation Now, which hopefully is coming to Australia sometime soon, which includes a full backlog, not the entire backlog, but a massive library of PS3, PS4, potentially PS5 games, as well as some sprinkled in there PS2 titles. But I mean, I won't really care about that service either unless Need for Speed Most Wanted finally becomes available. But the thing about that service is that they keep rolling in games and then taking them away every few months or whatever. So that kind of thing would really piss me off. But GeForce Now, I don't want to pay for the same game twice and then pay to use features that already are in the game that I just paid for, you know, and have limited access to said game. So for that reason alone, I don't see GeForce Now being viable. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about GeForce Now in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Brett Madigan. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. That delay is kind of shit, though. It still doesn't even give you the option to use local saves. It relies heavily on cloud saves. I hate them so much.